Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Something that's absolutely disgusting is when a company you love is being disrespectful to somebody who used to work for the company and its vision slash legacy, or one or more of its properties or its fans. I'm talking about Nintendo discontinuing a bunch of Mario stuff after March 31st, 2021. That was a horrible way to end off Mario's 35th anniversary. And to forget about that, I'm going to do research on this Patrick Star spin-off series. SpongeBob SquarePants, one of the most popular cartoons of all time, created by Steven Hillenburg, a former marine biologist. There's a lot of SpongeBob episodes out there, but something that each episode has in common is that SpongeBob SquarePants appears in all of them. Since he's the title character, it is indeed necessary that this needs to happen. Sometimes he appears less than other episodes, but he's always in every episode. There are a lot of other characters too, and some fan favorites that people can't get enough of. However, the main character who makes the second greatest number of appearances in the show is Squidward Tentacles. Patrick Starr follows close behind. While he is the second main character, Squidward's made more appearances than him. But that doesn't change the fact that Patrick has had a lot of funny moments during the series. He's a great character who has changed a little bit throughout the series, but I think that as long as he doesn't star in his own show, it can't get much worse. Oh, great! Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse. Yeah, Patrick Starr is getting his own spinoff. This was announced back in August 2020. I didn't think much of it at the time since I was furious about the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run being pulled from theaters. Later on, in March 2021, we got more info about it. This show is about a slightly younger Patrick living at home with his family, hosting a show for the neighborhood from his TV turned bedroom. What the fuck? I've stated this before, but I felt that animated spin-offs don't do very well. But since this is on Patrick, I'm sorry, but I think this isn't going to go well. Patrick Starr is a comic relief character on Spongebob, and as this show, Planet Sheen from 2010 showed us, spin-offs focus on the comic relief character go horribly wrong. I know I keep bringing this up as an example, but it's the best example to draw from in my opinion. Sheen was my favorite character on Jimmy Neutron, and this show basically ruined his entire character. At least with Cam Coral, the show is focused on the regular characters we all know about, just aged down to be much younger. This show actually has a main character who doesn't always work in the lead role of just a regular episode. All of this adds up to being a recipe for disaster. So today, I'm going to go over what we know about the spinoff and state how much this goes against the Spongebob canon. Before we begin, I have to say, these are all my opinions. If you are excited for the Patrick Starr show, then just ignore what I'm saying. Now it's time to start complaining. Starting off, we already know that this is disrespectful to the creator Steven Hillenberg's visions for this show. However, this interview from 2009 specifically addresses Patrick and how Hillenberg said he didn't see any spin-offs, so this almost feels like this is another level of disrespect, but it's also not at the same time. But I already went over this a million times when talking about Camp Coral, so I'm not going to repeat myself again. Looking at some other things about the spinoff, we see that it's about Patrick's family. Okay, so we know that Patrick has a mom and a dad named Marky and her respectively, a grandfather that we never saw on screen, and a big sister named Sam. In this spinoff, Patrick's dad is named Cecil, his mom is named Bunny, he has a grandfather named Grandpad, and he has a younger sister named Squidina. What the fu- Okay, so this goes against something we've known about the series since 2001. Firstly, in episode 74, I'm with Stupid, Patrick's parents are shown at the very end of the episode. Secondly, while their names are never said on screen here, in episode 149, Rule of Dumb, this medieval family chart is shown and we see that Patrick's parents are named Herb and Margie. Third of all, the only sister that we know that Patrick has is an older sister named Sam who appeared in episode 292, Big Sister Sam. And this character is nowhere to be seen according to this article. Four, his parents even returned in an episode of season 12 that was released on the season 12 DVD before officially airing on TV and hasn't aired as of April 2021. And five, the designs of Patrick's parents in the spinoff are completely different compared to the actual series. The latter was actually addressed by Vincent Waller himself on Twitter. 
When a fan asked him about the designs, he said that while they worked for the episode, the characters themselves were boring. The crew thought the new designs were much funnier. First of all, a spin-off is meant to expand on the show's universe, so they thought the designs and personalities of Patrick's parents were boring in the actual series? Then they could have fleshed them out here and made them much more interesting and funnier. Second, if they wanted to change the designs of his parents, would it have killed them to, at the very least, stick to their original names, or vice versa? And third, at least these characters look like they are Patrick's parents. These characters look more like his aunt and uncle or something. So clearly, I'm upset about how Patrick's parents are handled here. Let's move on and talk about his grandpa. Personally, I'm a bit more indifferent about his grandpa since he never appeared on screen in the actual show. Patrick did mention him in episode 115, The Sponge Who Could Fly, but in his thought cloud, Spongebob's grandpa was shown. However, there is still something that bugs me about him. Going back to the medieval family chart, if we look up above Herb Star, this line shows a green star named Billy Bob. Also looking above Herb and Margie, there's no line connecting them to any other family member like Cam. So most likely, Herb is the son of Billy Bob and he looks completely different from Grandpat. Now let's talk about Patrick's sister. As I mentioned, Patrick has an older sister named Sam. In that episode, he explains that he lost her in the surf when they were kids. Of course, Sam not appearing here, or at the very least in this picture, could be a result of being lost in the surf. That's part of the issue. The bigger issue is that he has a younger sister named Squidina. Squidina. Why does that name sound familiar? Huh. Squidina is a teenage girl who's actually a squid and not an octopus. After thinking this one through, I am also not sure how to feel about it. She first appeared in episode 453, Goons on the Moon, from season 11, as one of the science scouts that Sandy took to the moon. She later appeared in episode 492, The Goofy Newbie, as a waitress at Goofy Goober's Ice Cream Party Boat. Now to be fair, her last name was never said in any of these episodes, and the two of them were shown interacting in The Goofy Newbie, and they don't mention them being siblings. Additionally, in the main series, Mr. Krabs, a crab, is the father to Pearl, a whale. This is a similar situation as Squidina, who is a squid, is also the daughter of Patrick's parents, who are starfish. Of course, this page on Encyclopedia Spongebobia says Squidina is adopted, but no actual article about the spin-off states that she's adopted. My final statement could be seen as either a complaint or some kind of theory. It is stated that Squidina is 8 years old. In the actual series, she is depicted as a teenager since she and Pearl are shown interacting. This also implies that she is in high school since Pearl is also in high school. So since Squidina is 8 years old in the spinoff and a teenager as of season 11, one of the later seasons in the show, and Patrick is older than Squidina in both the spinoff and the main series, how old is Patrick? So that's all I have to say about Patrick's family. They might be an extremely minor part of the main show, but this spinoff is going against a few things we do know about his family, and that makes me really upset. Now let's move on to what the show will be about. A talk show hosted by Patrick. The articles all say that this is about Patrick hosting a talk show for the neighborhood from his TV turned bedroom. At first glance, you're like, how the hell will that work? Well, here's how that will work. Looking at this article, it says Squidina is the executive producer of Patrick's imaginary talk show. What the fuck? Why on earth would they make an entire show about an imaginary talk show? With all the ridiculous ideas the show, and Nickelodeon for that matter, has come up with over the years, I never in my days would have imagined an entire show focused on an imaginary talk show. At least with Camp Coral, that's a new setting about something different than Bikini Bottom, and I could see a few creative episode ideas coming out of this show at the very least. But this? Really? As much as I don't think this would work as an entire show, I personally have many more ideas on how this could work. If Nickelodeon wanted to have an entire spinoff about Patrick having a talk show, it could work in a different scenario. Let's say this spinoff takes place after the Spongebob Squarepants movie, which is at the very end of the current Spongebob timeline. This spinoff would show Patrick aged up, and he'd become a talk show host similar to Jimmy Fallon. 
it would be very weird and rather dumb, but it's a real talk show, and I can see more creative ideas with that compared to an imaginary talk show. Now when I talked about the Camp Coral episode where Spongebob tries to catch his first jellyfish, I felt that this could work as part of an episode in the main series. First off, the concept of a character hosting a talk show was already used in the core series. In episode 244, Tentacle Vision, Squidward hosted his own real-life talk show. Also, in episode 438, Moving Bubble Bass, there was a brief scene at the beginning of Bubble Bass hosting his own talk show, but that was only a fantasy talk show. Of course, in Tentacle Vision, everybody came in and caused chaos in Squidward's house, and Squidward was upset, so not a lot of people liked this episode. However, there are still reasons these two scenarios work. In Tentacle Vision, the talk show only occurs in one episode, and it was a real life talk show. In Moving Bubble Bass, it was a fantasy talk show, but it was only a brief scene in the beginning. It didn't last long, and the main focus of the episode was something else. If we're talking about Patrick having his own imaginary talk show, this could work as either an episode or just a portion of an episode. If it was the focus of an episode, I'm sure the writers would come up with ways to show that it has potential, though I do think it would probably work better as an episode that's less than 11 minutes long. As just the portion of an episode, no matter the length, it might be the best. There are quite a few occasions where the characters have dreams, so maybe we could see the imaginary talk show in one of Patrick's dreams. In episode 326, Home Sweet Rubble, Patrick was shown having a dream where he was the president. In that episode, the dream dragged on for way too long and was completely silent, but it wasn't the focus of the episode. Additionally, episodes 30, Sleepy Time from season 1, and 509, Dream Hoppers from season 12, are about Spongebob visiting other people's dreams. Obviously, since this idea was used twice, Using it a third time this quickly after the second time would be extremely lazy. However, it could work in a different way. Imagine an episode where the characters are getting ready for bed, and as they fall asleep, we see their dreams. But this time, characters don't visit others' dreams. The first dream we would see is Spongebob's dream. Of course. After about a minute or so, we would leave Spongebob's dream cloud, and then we would see somebody else's dream like Squidward's or Gary's. At some point, we would see Patrick's dream, and it would be this imaginary talk show. It would fit right at home too, because Patrick dreams about riding a mechanical seahorse and being president, but doing nothing. The imaginary talk show is basically nothing too, so this would feel very appropriate in the mainline series. Again, I'm just proving that most, if not all, story ideas could work in the main show, and Nickelodeon doesn't have to create a spin-off just to execute these ideas. Hell, this could even work on a different Nickelodeon property. I feel it would work best if it was used as a sketch on All That or The Amanda Show in the 90s or early 2000s. Those sketch shows were focused on the most random and absurd comedy, and something like an imaginary talk show can have such random things happen, and it could fit in here. It could even work in the modern season 11 reboot of All That. As uninteresting and unfunny as that season is, it could work as a sketch there more than an actual show. I'm just spitballing ideas here, and they all sound like the concept of an imaginary talk show would work better in either of these scenarios rather than as a full-fledged TV show. The best thing that I think could come out of this show is that it could give context as to how Patrick got kicked out of his parents' home. In episode 11, Home Sweet Pineapple, Patrick stated that he never went back to his parents' house after they kicked him out, so maybe this spin-off could explain how he got kicked out of his parents' home. Also, since Patrick and Squidina are apparently siblings here, where does Squidina live? Does she live with her parents? Do Patrick's parents live in Bikini Bottom? So those are basically my thoughts on what we know of the Patrick Star show spin-off so far. Even though I was already furious about Cam Coral, I think this spinoff about Patrick is actually making me angrier, but not angry enough to actually devote some time to watching Cam Coral. At the moment, this show is slated for release in July 2021, and is actually coming to Nickelodeon first and not Paramount Plus, which I think is nicer than starting off on Paramount Plus and coming to Nickelodeon later. But if I'm hesitant on watching Cam Coral, I'm even more unsure about watching the Patrick Star show. I also think it's absolutely ridiculous that Nickelodeon is having three different shows centered around the same characters run on the network at the same time. I really hate how Nickelodeon is just doing whatever they can to milk as much money out of Spongebob as possible. 
At this point, why not just end the show and only have spin-offs? Even though it might make people upset, myself included, at least I'd have no reason to return to the network and I can finally move on with my life. I also really miss when they actually had much more creative and funny shows and now they're currently banking on putting social media stars in lead roles in sitcoms. The latter is one of the lowest lows a TV company can stoop to in my opinion. If anybody out there is looking forward to the Patrick Star Show spinoff and is enjoying Cam Coral, then ignore my criticisms, I'm just stating my opinions. And now that they're all out of the way, I only have one thing left to say right now. And that is, if they really want to create these spinoffs, would it kill them to stay true to the roots of the series and its universe at the very least? The fact that Nickelodeon is just defying everything the creator wanted for the show and what the fans know and love about this show makes me so mad I could just... Yeah! Well, obviously the spinoffs are bad, but now it's getting to a level where I'm so angry that I just broke something. But I still did that out of anger towards Nickelodeon and breaking the SpongeBob continuity for the spinoffs, even though there's hardly any SpongeBob continuity. I need to think this through. Ah, oh, that's better. Much better. <laughs>